right, hello and welcome to the Expert Inside Interview. My name is John Goldman from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am delighted to be joined by Ron Carr, who is in lovely New Jersey today. How are you doing, Ron? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Excellent. And Ron has, oh, for over 36 years, uh, been in sales and leadership positions. He's recognized as a sales uh, success expert. He's been on national TV, including Fox, Bloomberg, uh, C-Suite Network and others, and now Sales Pop, obviously. And, uh, and uh, Ron has a, a methodology called the Velocity Mindset. So we wanted to talk today a little bit about the Velocity Mindset and the seven traits of, of high-performing salespeople. So Ron, just a baseline us here. What's a Velocity Mindset? Well, the Velocity Mindset, is if you look at like in the manufacturer and when they buy a machine, and they produce, let's say, 10, 10 units. The cost is amortized over 10 units. Mm -hmm. But if you can increase it to 100 units, then your cost goes down and your profit goes up. So if we look at ourselves as a machine, we're all working really hard, right? Even with technology, we thought we'd have all this time on our hands, but we don't. And yet we all want to produce more. We all want to sell more. We all want to make more money. The question is, how do you do that? How do you gain velocity, speed? And in order to do that, you need speed plus focus. That that's velocity. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when you look at the focus part, what I've realized in 36, well, first of all, on top of a 10 year sales career on my own in management, and then 36 years of working with companies and individuals, they're having the wrong conversations. And that strips right. their velocity. Mm -hmm. and, and so we teach them how to have the powerful conversations and the end result is they're able to dramatically reduce their sales cycle. So what is preventing people from having the right kind of focus? Because I, I agree with you about, you know, we have all this technology and it hasn't given us any more time. We're busier than ever, or although I tend to think we're more distracted than ever as opposed to being busier Good than point. ever. <laughs> uh, so how do you help people figure out where they should be focusing? Well, the first thing is, is a change in their own mindset, all right? We have to move from a self-focused mindset to a customer-focused mindset. Anybody we're trying to influence, also from managers, teachers, whoever. And what I mean by that is we always go into the call, consume, I got to make this deal, I got to get this deal, I got to pay my mortgage, whatever. And so all we're doing is asking the wrong question because it's all about us and we lose the attention of the customer. In my last book, we titled it Lead, Sell, or Get Out of the Way, The Seven mm -hmm. Traits of Great Sellers. The reason we titled it that way is because in today's age, selling is no longer about puking. That's people who are the knowledge about everything. Selling is no longer about puking about all your features because they've already seen that on the internet. Mm -hmm. And when I, I speak to my audience and say, how many of you can't wait to run into the next salesperson who's going to bore the devil all the details, <laughs> half of which you're not interested, and that one hand goes up. Sure. But then when I say, when you have to make a decision, how many of you would value someone leading you through a process to make the right decision, all the hands go up. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, are you going into that as a salesperson or as a leader? Someone right. who's going to help someone get to where they want to be. That's the first and foremost change in the mindset that has to happen. If you do that, you'll be in a better position to ask better questions, which we can get into, and you'll be able to get to the outcomes that someone's looking at faster. So, so part of the problem is that I think uh, some salespeople, they, they go into the situation feeling like they're in a secondary or subservient position, as you say, you know, yes. that they, they should be going in with the with a leadership position. So when you talk about uh, your, your seven traits, uh, I see you have visualizing as the first one. What, what, what do you yes. mean by that? So um, let's take emails and voicemails, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody says, oh, my, they don't return my voicemail calls and they don't return my emails. So let's, let's deconstruct a typical voicemail, okay? Uh -huh. I'm gonna share with you a typical voicemail and you're gonna tell me, John, if you think it's the right one, this is what most people do, okay? So I'm calling you trying to sell myself as a keynote speaker for your event, right? Yeah. Hi, John, this is Ron Carr. I'm a keynote speaker, and I wanted to talk to you about the message that I can give to your audience at the next meeting that's going to change the way they sell. Please give me a call. My number is XYZ. Let's stop. <laughs> is that self-focus or customer focus? Oh, it's self-focus. I probably yeah. deleted after Ron. Yeah. So the first <laughs> line, for, hi, my name is Ron Carr. Self-focus or customer focus? Self-focus. Um, I'm a keynote speaker. I want to speak in your next meeting. Self-focus or customer focus? Self-focus. I want to talk to you about how I can change the way they sell. Self-focus or customer focus? 
Oh, still self focus. Yeah, yeah. Please call me. Here's my number. Self focus or customer focus? <laughs> self focus. It was not one thing about you. Uh huh. Exactly. So what we teach people is number one, what is the goal? Visualize what is the goal for that call? It's not to sell yourself as a keynote speaker, mm -hmm. it's to get the person to call you back. Right. So, what can you say stimulating enough that they're going to A, keep listening to it because they don't have a lot of time? They want to 10 messages they're listening to in the airport. And B, they're going to want to take more time to call you back. It's got to be on outcomes. Mm -hmm. right? So, so a message I might leave for someone and say, John, I know you're really busy as a VP. I know you're trying to get your team to sell more. But you know what? From a lot of what I see in a lot of VPs, they're going around it the wrong way. Give me a call so I can share with you some of the strategies that are working today. Right. So now, the, is, that more, is that more customer focus? That's, that's more customer focus. But what I like is what you've outlined there is uh, that you have broken this down into the goal of the call of your voicemail is to get a call back. Your goal of your voicemail is not to get, as you said, to get the sale. And I think that's right. the problem a lot of people have is they always look at the, the end line instead of realizing that there are stages to getting there. Right. And then what they do is they puke. They start talking about themselves and everything. But, you know, there's a psychology of a sale. Mm -hmm. All right. If I start giving you a solution, but we haven't had you start talking about where you're trying to go, it lands right. in deaf ears. Sure. Solution is only powerful in context. So if I get you to talk about the outcomes you want, then I present the one or two things in context to what you just said. You're listening to it. So the so it, it, exactly so it, it's a it's a building process and an understanding process and 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 mapping it uh, and and like I said I think unfortunately a lot of salespeople get a little bit too uh, you know as you said self self focused and also insecure so they start to to ra to ramble a little bit. Uh, you also talk about positioning and then building alliances. Uh, tell me a little bit about those. Well, positioning is the next step, though. And a step, you know, in that voicemail or if I meet with you, it's not about me, it's about you. I'm asking you what are three things you want to accomplish this year, whatever. I'm now positioning myself at a higher level. Right. If I start coming in and talking about my product, it's a lower positioning. Mm -hmm. First of all, you may say, I already got that. I don't need you. Or are you going to compare me based to everybody else that you think what the value is? But right. if I start asking you a, what I call as enterprise questions, which is where you're trying to go and the challenge you have in getting there, you no longer see me as a salesperson of a product. You see me as potentially as someone that can help you get to some place. You see me more as a trusted advisor. Yeah. That's and, positioning. Yeah, and by the way, that is what I'm looking for. That is, uh, I'm going to listen to somebody who I think understands something about my business and under and can help me get to a result. Right. Uh, right. And now we're having a conversation of equals. Yeah. Now it doesn't mean you don't do research before sure. you do. But at the end of the day, it's, you can't. Re the research you got to have them tell you because mm -hmm. they have to be present in a conversation in order for them to be actively listening to what you're saying absolutely and then you start talking about building alliances mm -hmm. well it's the same thing we know that one of the best ways to get business referrals mm -hmm. but again the self-focus hey john uh, can you please give me a referral to any clients you think could use a speaker right. mm -hmm. what's in it for you yeah but if i, I say john you know as a radio host and 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 what you're doing in your business share with me the three things you, you want your radio show to do next year. And you'll right. start sharing them with me. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll say, great. And are you, a lot of your clients dealing with the same issues, you may say yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, well, look, you know, you're trying to make an impact in the world. You're going to say yes. I say, great. When you run into those clients that have a need for what we just talked about, would you mind sharing my name? Right. It's going to raise your profile as someone who's able to bring resources to them. Mm -hmm. That's building an alliance. I'm trying to help you succeed. First yes. I get to that and how I can help you succeed, then the referral comes. So if it's all about me asking for referrals, you'll never get any. Yeah, because you're correct uh, there in the way that you position that completely differently. Uh, because at the end of the day, we, we love, uh, who doesn't love to say, oh, I know somebody who can help you. Right. Uh, it makes us feel good. We feel like we brokered in somebody. We, we have great network and we're showing that. But as you say, if it's a simple, uh, do you know anybody who can who you can refer me to, we tend not to think, uh, number one, we always tend to blank anyway and go, no, I don't know. You blank it. and you're not in a moment. But mm -hmm. if I'm now asking you what you're trying to achieve out there for your customers, and if I provide the link for you and you see it, are you more um, apropos or going to do it? Mm -hmm. 
And then you have uh, the, the next trait is you know, asking good questions, right? And, and this, it's amazing how this is still a subject, right, right. today, because we've had, uh, we've had years and years of books and research and all of that kind of thing around questioning. And yet questioning is still, it's, it's still a fundamental skill that some people don't do as well as they could. Well, it's a fundamental skill because there's new people coming up the ranks that they have to learn it but also it's that emotion of the self-focused mindset that takes us away from that. So it's a two pronged reason as to why it's not happening. Mm -hmm. So what's, 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 what are some good questions or what is a good question? Right. So you like? don't want to ask status based questions. If I'm coming into your office and say, well, who have you used as a speaker? What do you try? Well, no, what's worked? You're, you're losing interest because your job is not to educate me. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if I say, as you look at the year coming up, what are the three things you're looking to achieve? And then, you know, start building a conversation around that and the consequences and so forth. Then I can present a, va a powerful value proposition because it's, it's, it's streamlined right to what you're looking for. So the good questions are asked issues-based questions around needs, fears, and desires. And we use the word, the number three, it's a powerful number. If you ask for one, they can't think of anything, you have no conversation. If you ask for three, you stretch the way someone's thinking, and eventually you're going to come up with a couple of things you can have a good conversation with. Then when they speak, you want to clarify, make sure they're in the same wavelength, because we make too many assumptions. Mm -hmm. So we hear the same words over and over. I want an engaging speaker. A lot of people say, oh, let me tell you how an engaging speaker I am. <laughs> well, wait a minute. No. Tell me what you mean by an engaging speaker, mm -hmm. because that might be different than what I have in mind. So you want to clarify, and then you want to find out what's at stake for you. What, what are the consequences if you don't get the engaging speaker? What is your worst fear? And then I can present my value proposition, which is the next trait, in a way that's going to talk about engaging, in a way that's going to be talking about you getting to those three goals, and I've got your rapt attention. And I'm probably doing a better job of showing you how you can achieve that than someone who's just selling a product or a service. Yeah, no, I love that, especially the bit about, because uh, we're very good at filling in the gaps, right? Or, or making the assumptions, like you said, when you, you say, like, I want an engaging speaker and you're, and you're like, oh, that's me, because I'm really loud and funny. Yeah. And, I, I, and that's and the self-focused mindset. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. And it's almost like you're waiting for a trigger word where you can right. jump in. So when we wrote this book, um, and it's still selling well, the leads still yeah. get out of the way, and all these conversations are in that book, if they want to get it. Um, What's happened since we wrote that book a few years ago, we came up with a little observation. When we assess new sales executives and, and, and senior talent in an organization, they're looking at us to assess them. The number one trait we look for is empathy. Mm. And the reason is if you don't have empathy, you don't have an, an internal need to get to know somebody. Right. And you'll be more susceptible to the self-focused mindset. If you have empathy and people are saying, I want an engaging speaker, empathize, oh, so I'm, I'm probably going to put myself in your shoes, tell me more. You'll tend to ask those questions. So the one thing we want people to really hone, even if they don't have it enough, is empathy. Help people get to where they want to be and you'll make more than you ever thought was possible. Uh, I, uh, I love that point because one of the things that I often stress is that uh, sellers always need to be aware that buyers, particularly in, in, in a B2B uh, situation, uh, buyers have a lot at stake when they're making a purchasing decision. A purchasing risk. decision, yeah, risk. It can be career enhancing, it can be career you know, damaging, depending on whether they make the right decision or not. And so naturally enough, they're you know, they're nervous, they're, they're unsure. There's a lot of things that you need to understand about the buyer rather than just, are you going to sign the check or not? Absolutely. And, and, and when you think about that risk, you know, the answer no is really not that they're not interested. Mm -hmm. It's the answer of no risk. If they right. perceive there's any risk, they're not going to say yes. Mm -hmm. now, they're going to say no. So that's why we all say a good salesperson doesn't stop at the first no. They find out what's missing. They go after the second or third no. But yes, you, your job as, as a leader is to make the environment as safe for someone so that they can say yes to you. And it has to be about them, not you. Exactly. And, and it's a good point, too, about the, uh, the no and the no risk, uh, because I think even since the, you know, the financial crash, we've had a lot more uh, risk aversion probably than we've ever had. And people are losing out more and more to no decisions as opposed to even losing out to competitors because people have that risk. risk well, they're still making decisions, but they're making them differently. Yeah. 
yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so communicating persuasively. Yeah. So um, since you wrote that book, well, there was a, a financial services company. Mm. They brought me in. They wanted to reduce the calls from five to three to get a new investor on board. And so I, I go and call calls with them, and they go into retiree homes, and they'd be chit-chatting for 12 minutes about the people's family, and I can see the eyes rolling. So when we started asking them, bring it down to two minutes of chit-chat, but ask them this question. It's not about a stockbroker. just want to ask you what are the three things you want your money to provide for you. All of a sudden, they're getting these people into a different zone. Mm -hmm. So cortisol is the fight-or-flight hormone in our brain. Yep. It's there. We're not eliminating it. Our job as a leader is, is to ask the question that's going to get them in the engaged part of cortisol. If I'm asking them what they're doing with stocks and bonds and they got someone already, it goes up to the roof. They're not engaged. But if I ask them where they're trying to go, that's what they want to talk about, right? And it's like if you're going on a date, right? What are the best dates people have? It's not when you talk about yourself. Just keep asking questions of the woman. They'll think you're the best speaker out there, okay? <laughs> because it's about them. Mm -hmm. So my best conversation is when I'm not even talking, communicating persuasively, is, is getting to know people, finding out where they're trying to go, and then helping them get there. Yeah, and that's again where the empathy also comes into play because, uh, as you say, you're treating people as individuals and finding out what is important to them. Because that's another mistake that uh, we often make is that we look at people as part of a company and rather than looking at them as individuals who, yes, there's a, they may have company goals, but they may have personal goals that are actually are bigger motivation. So you bring up two good points. Number one, um, the internet can't do that part that we just talked about. Yes. That's why they pay you the money to do that. If you're not doing that, then they should just order off the web because you're not offering anything different, number one. Um, and the second point that you said, yes, where you need to find out not just the company goals, but you know, for CEOs, for example, one of the favorite questions I ask them is, what's, tell me the three th things you want your legacy to stand for when you're done. Right. Because CEOs are all about legacy. They're in it because they're taking a lot of risk, but they want to leave their mark on the industry. They want to leave their mark on, on, on society. They want to leave their mark on a company. If you don't tap into those emotions, you know, John, there's two parts to a conversation. There's the heart and the mind. Mm -hmm. Most of us go to the mind first. That's yeah. talking about features and money. That doesn't get people's attention. If you get them in the heart, mm -hmm. the emotional connection of where they're trying to go, what's important to them, then get to the mind conversation. That's when it's powerful. Yeah, I love that. That's beautifully said. And then the, the final piece here is the holding yourself accountable. And I love this because I do think that there's a, a, a certain lack of accountability that's prevalent these days. And also, when you normally say to people about uh, we, need to, uh, we need to hold people accountable, they'll always go, oh, I 100% agree with you. But they mean holding other people accountable. They rarely mean themselves. Yes. Yeah, so a CEO will say to me, you know, I want my people to be more accountable. And I said, well, that's not going to happen. He said, what am I talking to you? I said, let me teach you about accountability, okay? Um, if I make a promise to myself, and I'm the most important person in the world, which we are to ourselves, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we talk about Maslow's hierarchy, you know, we, you know, we need a roof, we need food, and all that good stuff. If I make a promise to myself and I'm not keeping it, why in the heck am I going to keep a promise I made to you? Right. So organizational accountability is nothing more than a sum total of individual accountability. Uh -huh. Now, here's where a manager goes wrong. They're usually coaching on the wrong issue. They're coaching on a symptom and not the issue. I was with a, a line manager one time. He came in cursing because he said, you guys on a damn cell phone, he won't get off. I said, what did you do? I told him to get off the damn cell phone. I said, what happened? He said, everybody else is on a damn cell phone. So I replayed what he did to me in the conversation and said, how's your interest level? He goes, it's not there. I said, now, do you know anything about this person, their personal motivations? Yeah, they want to be a master welder. So maybe have a conversation like this. Hey, I know you want to be a master welder, which is great. You know, there's two things you need, quality, which you have, and timely performance. This project's about 20 minutes late. What can we do together to get you back onto that track so that you can get to where you want to be? Well, he did that, and the conversation was totally different. Right. He was engaged, and they were telling them what they were going to do because they wanted something to, which was that master welder position. Never spoke about the cell phone, number one. So they want to talk about the wrong issue. And number two, when that person's engaged in a solution and they're coming up with the answers, do you th think there's a better shot to hold themselves accountable?
Oh, for sure. Because what's it, uh, you, know, uh, you know, people believe conclusions that they come to them by themselves and anything you or I can tell them. So if you help them come to their own conclusions, yeah, they're going to hold themselves accountable. Right. So how do we build individual accountability? And as a manager or coach, you can't make that effort with somebody if you don't understand what motivates them and what's important to them. Yeah, and what I like what you, uh, what you said there is basically if you take a step back and do a little analysis first rather than just react to, as you said, the symptom, then you find out that there's something completely different lying behind it. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, this has been fantastic, Ron. We're bumping up against the end of our time. The book is Lead, Sell, or Get Out of the Way. Uh, and I encourage you to look at it. There's some great information in there. And Ron, before we go, if you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself, what you do, and how they can contact you. Sure. So um, obviously I speak at conferences, you know, on sales and leadership. And I also consult with companies and annual retainers, companies that are looking to become more high performing and they want to look at the culture issues. And then uh, other things we do is I run a chief revenue officer mastermind group, mm. which is just for CEOs and VPs who are actually starting up a new group. So you'll see that on the website if anybody wants to call me directly because it's by invitation only, we'd be more than happy to interview you. And then, of course, we have the books that you talk about, Lead, Sell, Get Out of the Way. Excellent. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Ron Carr, it's been fascinating. Thank you very much for your time today. And I'll see Thank you all for another so. expert interview really soon. Thank you.